Today, we'll be diving into the Tastyworks mobile app to learn all about how to automate a bit of our trading. This is also going to be known as an OCO bracket order or a take profit stop loss order. And we're going to quickly learn how to place this on one of our current open positions, then as part of a brand new trade on both a stock and an option position. Now, beginning first with a position we already hold in the account, we'll first begin by coming down here to the very bottom of our screen and opening up the positions tab. Here within this page, we're actually going to see all of my current open positions, which at the moment, if I look up here towards the top, is simply a single share of PLTR. To the right of that, it also shows me I am currently down $5.76 since buying it, so at this point I'm already down quite a bit. But let's say for this one share of Palantir, I actually wanted to automatically stop myself out if Palantir were to drop even further, down to, let's say, $7 a share. But rather than just closing out if we were to go down any further, let's also say I wanted to close out for a specific profit target. So let's say if Palantir were to ever go back up to $20 a share. Placing that is actually pretty simple. We are simply going to click anywhere on the position line. So right here where it says one share of stock. That'll then open up a little window down here at the very bottom. And there we can actually find and click on the button marked bracket which will then actually take us automatically to a screen with our current open position. But if we were to hit next down here at the bottom, we've got our profit taking order. Then hitting next one more time takes us to our stop loss order. Beginning first with the profit taking order, let's go ahead and hit the back button. So down here at the bottom, hit back. Right here on this green ticket, we can now specify exactly what our profit target is. At the very top, we'll first start by specifying how many shares we wanted to close out of. So in this case, you can see it currently says negative one. So it's pretty simple in my case, since I only have one share of stock to begin with. But here's where you could adjust it if you ever needed to. Now, besides that, right below there, we can actually set our specific profit target. So the exact price at which we would want to sell the stock for. At the moment, mine currently says I want to sell the stock if it were to ever go up to 1365, which right below also tells me that that would be a 5% profit on this particular trade. If we were to instead adjust that, so right here I'm going to click on the price and adjust that up to $15 and hit save. Looking below, we can now see that that would be for a 15% profit. And now the only thing left is to specify how long I actually want this order good for. So if it doesn't fill today, which at the price that I've set at $15 a share is almost guaranteed not to fill today, do I want this order to go out again tomorrow or do I just want it to cancel itself at the end of the day? Now at the moment with the box currently set to GTC, meaning good until canceled, this will actually go out every single day until it fills or until I come in here and cancel it myself. If I were to instead click on that, I could actually set the order just good for the day, I could set it good till a certain date, or we could make it good for today but also include the pre and post market as well, and that's what the EXT stands for. Now in this case, GTC is exactly what I want, so I'm going to go ahead and click on GTC right here. And now that we've got the profit taking order set, we'll now come down here below and hit the next button to now begin setting our stop loss order. This being the price at which we would want to exit the trade if it were to go against us any further. For this one, you can see the current stop activation price is $7.22 a share, but if I were to click on that, let's say I wanted to adjust it down to $7 even. Go ahead and type in 7 and hit save. You can now see right below that that would now be a 46% loss for my opening price. And we can also see that it's going to be a stop market order, meaning if the stock ever goes down to $7 a share, a market order is going to get submitted to get us out of the position immediately, immediately sell this share of stock. However, we could flip that over to a stop limit order instead by simply clicking on the word stop market here, then coming down below and clicking on stop limit. So that now means that if the stock were to go down to our stop activation price of $7, instead of a market order going out there to get us out at whatever the next best price is, a limit order will go out there instead. Meaning I could actually set a minimum price at which I would be willing to sell this stock at. This is really only going to come in handy if there is a big move in the after hours when a stop isn't going to be active. Because a stop, remember, is only good for the regular market session. So for example, let's say a move does happen in the pre-market and it falls well below 7. If I were to come in here and adjust my stop limit price from $7 to let's say $690, I'm going to type in $690 here and hit save. 
I've now essentially said that the lowest price I'm willing to accept is $6.90. So if for some reason the stock does have a big move down in the pre-market and then the stock opens up at let's say $6.50, my stop would still activate because the stock did trade below seven, but now I'm saying I only wanna sell it if it goes back up to 690. But I know that can be a little bit confusing, so definitely make sure you have a really good grasp on the difference between a stop market and a stop limit order before you use them, but that's how you'll place it. And now that we're done with that, we've got both the profit target and the stop target set, both working good until canceled. In order to now place it, we will simply come down here below and hit that big review and send button. That'll then take us to a little confirmation screen to just confirm everything we just filled out on the previous screen, that it's all set correctly. So right here at the top, we've got the profit taking order, and then right below that, we've got the stop order. And then whichever one fills first, the other one is gonna be automatically canceled. Now in order to place it, we'll just come down to the lower right and hit the big green submit button. Once we've actually placed it, there are actually a few different places where we can see that working order, whether that be on the positions tab. So if we come down here below and hit the positions button, once again, right up here at the top, you can see my current open position on PLTR, but then right below that, you can see I've got two working orders, which if I click on that, will actually display those working orders down below at the very bottom of the screen. But if we were to minimize that, we could also come down here below to the activity page, we're right up here at the top, we can also see those working orders as well. Now, if you ever need to cancel or edit one of these working orders, you could simply come here to the actual order itself and simply click on it. Then down below, you could either hit the cancel button to just outright cancel this specific order or hit cancel complex order to cancel the entire bracket order. So both the profit taking order and the stop loss order as well. Now, if you instead wanted to edit it, we would again just click on it, and then over here we would hit the replace button, and that's how we can edit the specific order that we just clicked on. But in my case, for right now, I actually wanna cancel the entire bracket order, so I'm gonna come down here and hit cancel complex. Then I'm just gonna hit yes to confirm that I do in fact wanna cancel this complex order. But that's how you'll place a bracket order on a position you already hold. If you instead wanted to place it as part of an opening trade on a stock position, you'll first need to begin like any other trade. So in this example, let's say I wanted to buy a share of Apple and then automatically set my profit target to a 10% profit and my stop, I wanted to get myself out if it ever went down 5%. So to do that, I'll need to first start by pulling up Apple. So come up here to the search box in the upper right, go ahead and type in Apple, A-A-P-L, then go ahead and click on it in the list below and then hit stock. Here we'll then get an order ticket just like any other trade and we can now begin opening up our opening position. So how many shares do I wanna buy? What price do I wanna pay? And then how long do I want this opening trade good for? So starting up here at the top, we are buying. We do wanna use a limit order. I actually wanna adjust this from a day order to a GTC order. So we clicked on the word day here and now we're clicking on GTC. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the quantity set as one cause I only wanna buy one share of Apple but let's say I only wanted to buy Apple if it went down to, let's say $145 a share. So I'm gonna click on the limit price here and adjust it down to 145 and then hit save. And now that that's done, now that I've got the opening trade done to only buy Apple if it were to drop down to 145 a share, in order to place the bracket order on top of it or that automatic take profit stop loss order, we'll come down to the lower left hand corner and hit that big button mark bracket. That'll then open up the exact same window that we saw before. So right here, we've got the opening trade on the left-hand side. So this is our first trade. And we're saying once this trade happens, we then want the next two trades to go out there. So now to set the take profit and stop loss order, we're gonna come down below and hit next. And we'll first begin by setting our profit target. So for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and set my profit target to 160. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the price here, then type in 160 and hit save. You can then see above that that's gonna be a 10.3% profit target. And now to set the stop, we're gonna hit next. We're gonna come over here to the price where it currently says 142.10, and I'm gonna adjust that stop down to, let's say 138, and hit save. Right above that, you can see that that's gonna be a 4.8% stop. So I'm gonna get out if I ever lose 4.8% on the trade, and I'm actually gonna leave it set as a stop market order. But now that we're happy with that, we've got everything filled out, we'll come down here to the lower right and hit review and send. 
Here we can again get a confirmation just to make sure everything looks right. And at the very top, it's got our opening trade to buy one share of Apple if it ever goes down to 145. Then if that ever happens, we're going to automatically put out our profit target to get us out for a 10% profit or a stop loss order to get us out if we ever lose roughly 5%. Since that looks good, we'll just come down here below and hit the big submit button. But now that it's been placed, if we were to come back over here to the positions tab, we can now see that open working order on Apple, which if I click on it, shows again the opening trade, followed by the two closing tickets for the profit target or the stop loss. And again, all three of these are working automatically. Now, if you instead wanted to do this on an option contract, it's actually going to be the exact same process. So doing that again, we're going to come up here to the upper right hand corner of the search box. Let's even throw in Apple again, AAPL. We can then come down here below where we see Apple and go ahead and click on it. And then instead of saying it's going to be a stock trade, we're going to hit the option button. This will then take us to the actual option chain for Apple, and we're not going to dig too deep into this today. I just want to build out an opening ticket to buy an option contract, and then we're going to place a bracket on top of it. So let's just say, for example's sake, we were bullish on Apple, and let's say we were looking at the December 16th option. So we're going to go ahead and click on December 16th here. I can then see a few of the available strikes right down the center. And let's say I wanted to buy a one, I don't know, 165 call. Scrolling down a little bit, if we were to look to the left of the 165 calls, we can see they're currently going for 36 cents by 37 cents. Like I said before, we're going to begin by opening a trade, just like any other trade, by simply clicking on the asking price of that 165 call. So I'm clicking on 37 cents here. You can then see the order ticket opens up down here below, and we would just fill that out just like normal. But if I were to click on it to expand it, It'll now look much more similar to a standard trade ticket for a stock position. So right here, I could specify exactly how many contracts I wanted to buy, and we're going to leave it set to one. I could then adjust the order type, but I'm going to leave it set to limit. I'm going to change the time and force from day to, let's say, GTC. I could come down here and say, I don't want to buy it for 37 cents. I only want to buy it if it goes down to, let's say, 30 cents even. Once hitting save, I've now got the opening ticket filled out. I'm saying I only want to buy this 165 call if it goes down to 30 cents. And now to place the bracket order on top of it, we're just going to come down to the lower left and hit the bracket button. It'll again take me to the exact same screen as before where we can see the opening trade to buy the 165 call. But then if we hit next at the bottom, we can now set our profit target. And hitting next again, we can set our stop loss target as well. But as you can see, it's essentially the exact same process whether you're placing a bracket order on an option contract or on a stock position. And hopefully you now feel at least a little bit more comfortable with the entire process of creating bracket orders within the Tastyworks app. I promise you with a little bit of practice, you will get the hang of it pretty quick. And if you would like to learn more, consider checking this video out next. I think you might find it useful. Otherwise, have a great rest of your week and I'll catch you on the next one.